Good evening and welcome to the College of Complexes. Tonight our speaker will be Andy Anderson. The College of Complexes consists of the following format. We first have our speaker who will speak, and we will have an extensive question and answer period. And then after that, we'll have our infamous rebuttal period where each one and everyone will get a chance to speak either on or off topic. Usually, it'll be about four to five minutes with the rebuttals, and the speaker will get the last word. Good evening. My name is Andy Anderson. For those of you that may not have attended one of my speeches before, and we have uh, heat here tonight, apparently. So, uh, some days it's a little colder than normal. At any rate, uh, it's been a hectic week. Um, tonight, uh, the tonight's topic, uh, the write-up was how to tell the difference between fake news and real news. And um, the news media in America, they present well, they have several techniques. Uh, one, of, one of the reasons that people uh, aren't aware of what's going on is you hear one thing, uh, it might be a piece of fake news, but they want you to believe it's real. You hear 10,000 minutes of that for every minute of single truth or forensic evidence that seeps out on that particular subject. So, people, advertising works. And if you hear one thing, one, two, five, ten thousand times more than something else, then you, you tend to believe that's what's got to be real. And this has been going on since uh, the late 60s, early 70s. 1973 was the watershed year when the Powell memo came out and they decided that they had to start converting the country back from uh, a democracy that had a growing middle class into uh, shape it back into two classes, rich and poor. And uh, we're 40 years later, and uh, that's pretty much what's happening. What's the Powell Memo? What? What's the Powell Memo? The Powell Memo, uh, for those of you who don't, don't know, the Supreme Court Justice Lewis, Lewis Powell, uh, before he became a Supreme Court Justice, uh, back in 1973, he sent a letter to the Chamber of Commerce uh, calling for a coordinated effort of businesses to start their own media and think tanks, the Heritage Foundation, the Cato Institute. All these right-wing foundations were founded by rich people like the Koch brothers and others. So by 1980, 81, 82, they had developed a, a pretty good uh, group of think tanks that would produce these reports uh, talking about right-wing things that, um, like un unregulated capitalism is the best form to run a country. And uh, we, we shouldn't have any regulation on polluters because uh, businesses will do what's in the best interest of the country. And uh, it's better to let them run free and unfettered. Uh, so the Powell memo started the take back of the growing wealth that the middle class was developing. Uh, and wages just flattened out. From 1973 on, uh, wages haven't really made any progress. Today, if we had kept up with what the minimum wage was in 1962, when I was in high school, the minimum wage today should be about 2250. Yeah. So this fight for 15 is a fight for two thirds of a, of a living a minimum wage or a living wage. And the minimum wage back then you could live on it. You could pay rent in a small place and uh, get back and forth to work and survive. Today you can't do that on the minimum wage of seven or eight dollars. You have to be working two jobs. Basically, if you're supporting yourself, you got to work two jobs to live indoors. Um, but the. Um, The plan to get rid of the middle class in America is one of the things that is never talked about in the mainstream media. You'll see it on uh, the internet sites. Excuse me. I brought some cards tonight, uh, specifically for anybody that's interested in learning uh, 
where where the, the sites are with credibility. Mm -hmm. On the back of your business card. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The. Um, there they are. Right. There's a. Uh, what, yeah. Hand, hand one of these to everybody. There's two cars there. One of them is called the Zeitgeist Movement, and that's totally blacked out by the mainstream media in America because it's a coordinated uh, worldwide effort to change the political economy of the globe into something that has universal health care, nobody is homeless. Uh, Everybody has enough food to eat. They're protecting the environment. A lot of what's talked about in the so-called New Green Deal. Green New Deal. The Green New Deal is being promoted by the progressives who just got elected to Congress. And uh, those same kinds of things are being talked about all over the world. Do you know how big they are? Um, they're, um, for those of you that, um, can I have a show of hands here, uh, everybody that's uh, here tonight, anybody listening, have a show of hands, who's read any copy of the Censor News book over the last 10 years? Is everybody familiar with this book that comes out of Sonoma State University? It's a single... St. Jonathan's got a copy back there. This is the single most explosive book you can buy every year. It has the top 25 suppressed, censored, blacked out stories by the mainstream media. Stories that would change America overnight in a heartbeat if they were covered rather than intentionally suppressed. A lot of suppressed news, the reporters just told, oh, somebody covered that once so we don't have to cover it again. There's other pieces of stories that are so intensely radioactive, you say, that if a reporter goes anywhere near it, they just get fired and blackballed. Is anyone familiar with this book that's been out since 2004? It's called Into the Buzzsaw. This is another classic. It teaches journalism students, a lot of the well, censored news teaches journalism students how not to get fired and blackballed if you're going into the field of journalism. If you want to hang on to your job, you have to learn very early on that there are stories you can't talk about or you'll get fired and blackballed. This book was written in 2004 by a woman named Christina Borgesen. <clears throat> she collected the stories of 18 Pulitzer Prize winners that the one thing they had in common was they all got fired and blackballed one day when they were trying to work on a story that they thought was of you know, paramount interest to the American people. Game changers, in other words. So, the knowledge, how to distinguish between fake news and real news, it's in these books. It's, you can't discern between fake and real by just watching or listening to radio and television. Uh, mainstream, well, almost all radio in the American, uh, the Chicago area, there's no, almost nothing left that might be con considered progressive or common sense. It's mostly uh, fluff, right-wing talk shows. They don't talk about the main issues of the time. Yeah, you can listen for hours to almost any radio station in Chicago, and you won't hear anything about global warming, climate change, nothing about what our military is doing in Iraq and Afghanistan. What? Uh, NP, uh, she asked about NPR. Well, NPR doesn't talk about the radioactive stations either because they morphed into something that's more like corporate media. They, like Amy Goodman, they talk about certain things. They give you the impression they're progressive, but on the real critical issues, there's almost nothing there. That's why the, uh, if each of you got a card, uh, the websites are on the back of my card, Northwest Information Service. And um, Common Dreams, Common Dreams and Truth, those two sites were loaded with game-changing information this week. Just the last week it was hard. You got a hand up, Charlie? What, what question? Common Dreams is an open source website. Anybody can send in an article. It is, a, it is a considerably 
possibly a source of fake news. Yeah. You're recommending a site that they publish. Which one? Well, they don't have writers. This is not a newspaper. Is it like Wikipedia? They have yeah. common dreams. Of, Save it, Charlie. Uh, Char Charlie's got a very good question, and he's. Uh, He's, he's giving us an example of how people can mi be misled by uh, other people's opinions. If you, if you want to discredit something that's real, you attack it and say it's fake news. I have never, in the years I've been following Common Dreams, I've never heard anybody else ever say that that's fake news site or they post stuff that's not real. When they post an article, you can look up references and everywhere else. You can vet that article yourself, what they're talking about. It's, it's not fake news at all. And so uh, the idea is you have to check other sources. Well, uh, then, you know, the Common Dreams is not like Wikipedia, where Wik Wikipedia, uh, you know, you can log on and change things, and the CIA is constantly upgrading things to give a certain slant to certain kinds of things that are on uh, you know, Wikipedia. That's the uh, dictionary, right? The Internet dictionary. Is that right? Am I right about that? Yes. I don't use it at all. Yes. You got another question, Charlie? So when there's established media, such as the major publications, uh, Time, Newsweek, The Hill, Political, New York Times, all have an editorial policy. They have an editorial staff. And they they have the work verified in advance. Common Dreams does not even have a staff. How can they verify anything? The you tell me I got to do my own. You have to do your homework, Charlie. Well, then, which, then, which is then it's possible. Are you going to be heckling me all night? One with last, last real? Then, it. then it's possible that Common Dreams could have fake news. No, uh, that is not the way Common Dreams functions. They don't publish fake news. They give you a, a, a snapshot of reality on a subject. Also, they have a staff of independent writers. You see a bunch of the same names uh, weekly. Uh, it's supported by reader donations. They have no advertising dollars. It's not a corporate-funded site, not run by billionaires. It's supported with private donations. The same thing with uh, a website called Truthout. Some of the best articles on climate science uh, and the environmental issues you're ever going to find are on Truthout. They have the huge archives of articles that have been vetted and, and uh, constantly updated for uh, the latest in reality. Let me show you something. I recently, this book was recently published. Uh, this is a, a regular writer that contributed to Truth Out. His name is Dar Jamail. And he's, uh, he's been writing, uh, oh, they're not talking to us. How do you spell it? D-A-H-R, Dar Jamail. If you log on to Truth Out, you'll see one of his, his articles every couple weeks. It, uh, they publish an updated article on uh, dispatches from climate change or the environment or something. It's, it's been going on for a decade. And the latest articles, this book is a summary. The End of Ice, that's the title of this book. It's not fake news. They, have, they describe pictures of the ice melting at both poles, Greenland and the Himalayas. Ice is melting all over the world and at the poles in Greenland it's sliding into the water and raising the sea level. And it's not just sea level rise we have to worry about. The, the water temperature of the ocean is getting a little warmer. That means uh, our, uh, down in uh, Australia, they're losing the Great Barrier Reef. Coral is dying. And uh, if you just need a one degree temperature rise in uh, water. You can sit over there if you want in that back chair. Um, so, there, I think there's one back here, or there's one behind me. There's, there's an outlet behind me here, if you have to plug in something. Uh, hold on a minute, we have a new person that might want to take something. something. Yeah, I'm sorry, if it's, like, is, where is it? 
right up there on the wall. Right back here. Oh, yeah. Right, right in here somewhere. Those sites are like refugees. Oh, yeah. Refugees from climate? Yeah, the question was are we going to see client refugees? Uh, climate refugees, yes. Uh, and as the wall won't keep them out, incidentally. Um, can there, does, when you see this number 12, does it, anybody understand what this number means? 12 years. 12 years for what? No, it's let, 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 who, who else, anybody in the audience other than this lady up here know what this 12 means? Yes. Tim does. The end of the world in 12 years. That's a crack. Don't put that's that bullshit here. That's no, she, she didn't said. say that. I don't believe it. I'm not going to tolerate this shit tonight. Oh. 12 years until we all. You've been a heckler in the past, and we're, we're trying to have a decent discussion here. One full okay, inside. she did not say the world's going to end I'll in 12 years. I'll show you. I'll show you. Uh, hold on. Hold on. What oh, the, God, the time out. Time out, everybody. What the number 12 means is we have 12 years before the window of opportunity closes to do something about burning fossil fuel and how fast the ice is melting at the north and the south pole. All we have to do is let the ice melt for another 12 years and then runaway climate change is going to be beyond the capability of the human race to do anything about it. They're talking about sea level rise of 30 or 40 feet in uh, in 30 years, 40 years. That's how fast the ice is melting. Now this is scientifically proven. This is not some kind of fake news or some kind of computer projection that has no, no basis in reality. These are the actual photographs that are coming down from the satellites and they're calculating how fast the glaciers are uh, receding everywhere. Uh, so that's what's going on with that. Is that what ICE is about? The book ICE? The book, The End of Ice, describes what I just told you. Uh, that the, the group called Sunrise, group called Ex Extinction Rebellion in England, there's an army of young people, an army of young people that have been walking out of school. They're global. You can't use the Oh. Okay. Let's let Andy, well, let's, Andy well, keep presenting, please. <laughs> well, 12 years means we got to start the mess. I made a crash program on nuclear. Somebody want to hand out a flyer for me? Yeah. Here. I made a two-page two flyer that uh, has has a few facts on it. Here, take this hand these out. This is uh, basically this is the outline of my talk tonight. The rough outline. Uh, it centers the fake news is promoted by the media, who's been telling us we have 50, 60, 80, 100 years to do something about climate change. Also, the media in Chicago especially, but around the country, they are not making the connection between our extreme weather changes and how it's related to climate change. The polar vortex came down a lot farther than it normally does this year. In the past, we've had cold stretches, yeah, but overall, the temperature of the climate is warming up a little bit, bit by bit by bit. And the hurricanes are getting stronger and dump more water in rain when they come ashore. Even if the ocean levels don't rise much, Miami can look at being flooded about every year from now on with massive hurricanes. Houston, remember the flood that hit Houston a couple of years ago? Well, they, they, they say these, these are thousand year floods. And then one or two years later, they get another thousand year flood. That's how fast it's happening. We, I, I wrote this article a couple weeks ago about Martin Luther King, John F. Kennedy, Albert Einstein, and Greta Thunberg. Greta, worldwide, is on her way to being as famous as those three gentlemen because of what she did last August. 
she started a school strike movement. 15-year-old girl said, what am I doing in school if I have no future? So she got a sign that says school strike for climate, and she sat down by the parliament out on the steps by the Swedish parliament. And a few people joined her a couple days later, and then there were more, and then the movement spread to Australia, and then it went global. March 15th is the design designated day for a global strike in uh, many high schools, grade schools, it looks like in, in America, are going to be participating. And the teachers are beginning to support these students. Teachers that understand science are saying, yeah, what, what good is it to do the kids to sit in school totally if they haven't got any future beyond about 2035? And so that this is what this is science. This is not opinion or conjecture. And conditions are completely different than they were when our parents and grandparents were growing up. Nobody would have th thought about leaving school for protests back then. But this is all these kind of kids can think about they, they did. W without doing. They they they're they're doing nonviolent protest, civil disobedience to bring attention to the most critical problem facing humanity. Charlie, you've got a question again? Yeah, why should I go to work if there's no future? Not just go to school. Why should anybody do any work? Well, if, if, if the answer to that question is, uh, why should you do anything if, if there's no future? Well, we all have a piece of the responsibility for safeguarding the environment. It's, we weren't put on the earth to destroy everything. We all have a piece of the responsibility to protect the future of these children. It's not our future, those of us that are going to pass away in five minutes. Wait a minute, minutes. I don't got no kids. I'm the protector of me. Yeah. And I don't want to go to work. Well, you don't have to, Charlie. You can just sit back and vegetate. There's no problem with that. We're, nobody's asking it, you to do anything. Why are you calling it a school strike? Up. What? Why is it only a school strike? Well, it's not. It's spreading to other industries. I suffer the anxiety as much as anyone else about Don't global go warming. Okay, then answer. I'll have a question for you. What are, what are you doing about global warming and climate change? No, we don't. We don't get into that hominem stuff. What are you doing There's about it? There's rules at the college. Yeah, and you're violating the yeah, hell out of them. Yeah, you're making a personal attack. Well, let's just take a couple of minutes out and so let there, Charlie. Yeah, that's out. one of the rules. Let Charlie recite the rules. Yeah. It's okay for you to heckle me, but it's not okay for well, me to ask you a question. Well, why can't I stay home if the kids can stay? I don't think the kids should skip school. I think that's terrible. Skipping school is I can tell you. I, I what can does answer, that have to do with I, global warming? I can answer your question, Charlie. They want kids to skip school one day a week. They're, they're that's calling. terrible. What they're calling for is the same thing. Uh, you know, a bunch of people left school in 1941. All right, real quick, I'd like to bring order back to the college. Charlie, in, in, in would you let the presenter in, in, in speak? In 1941, millions, tens of millions of Americans took a time out for their ordinary lives. Boys and girls left school early. They left college. They enlisted in the military. For four years, they took a time out from their ordinary lives to solve the problem of World War II. That should be an uh, example that is self-explanatory. They didn't say, well, why can't I just stay in school and let other people go to war? I, I don't want to contribute to anything. I'm not a patriotic American. No, people didn't say that. There was, there was a widespread agreement that we had to pull together as a nation to solve the problem of World War II. Today, the problem is oil. Today, the problem is burning fossil fuel that are creating more and more and more carbon in the atmosphere that's causing uh, the, the, the global warming. We only, it only has to warm up a degree or two for the, the ice to begin to melt, and then it becomes a self-generating, uh, you know, self-fulfilling system where it's like a big snowball hitting the crest and beginning to roll downhill and picking up speed. If you, this is so loud, then why don't, why don't we do anything with Well, I the, don't understand. Greta, the school, if you have that flyer right there, log on to those of you that have smartphones or computers, just watch some of the videos with what some of these kids and their teachers are saying. All through Europe, the school's uh, strike movement is supported by an increasing number of teachers. 
It's, um, and they're recognizing that, you know, finally, it's time for a planetary wake-up call. And so it, uh, this time it's being led by students because adults that have lived their lives and don't have any more kids, you know, they say, well, uh, I don't have any kids in the system, so why should I worry about it? Well, that attitude, as Greta said, that attitude has got us to this point where the problem hasn't been handled by the adults for the last 30 years. They've left it to the children. And so it's up to the kids. Groups like Sunrise, and anybody know what the group called uh, Justice Democrats is all about? You have a show of hands. Who knows what Justice Democrat? One person over there. That's another thing. It's totally blacked out by the mainstream media in America. Completely. I didn't know about it until AOC, they call her, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, got elected. It was a big surprise to everybody. And we, we had a Justice Democrat folk at the college. Okay. Well, you didn't how, know about it? No, I didn't. You were here. I'm, I'm talking about what, what well, yeah, they were. Sweden Mustafa. Yeah. It was on our website. But was her, uh, that group actually Justice Democrats? Yes, yes. their logo. Okay. I can get Justice Democrats to maybe yeah. talk. Okay. Yes, right here. We already did. But you just saw that it, 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 it didn't ring a bell to almost anybody here. Because it's not in the news. It's not something we hear every day over and over and over like we hear about the latest school shooting. You know, it, it, to hear one thing one time and then that's it for three years. It doesn't stay much in your memory. It's what, what, what we hear over and over and over again. None of their candidates were any good. Well, uh, Alexandra was. She got elected. And the other ones here in Illinois were. Well, it's a start. It's a start. None of them got elected. Can I? No, we're trying to, We might just have a question and answer period for an hour here tonight. Yeah, um, really. But, Hello. the other book, uh, Charlie, with, um, we've had censorship in the college here. We've had free speech mostly, but there's two, there's two subjects that are totally censored that you can't talk about from this microphone here. Can Charlie tell us what those two are? No? Charlie? Okay, well, we'll talk about it later. When we, we'll, we'll give an update of uh, censored news in the past, just a three or four minute update. Right now, this is an article. Um, I'm going to be, uh, I'm becoming, I'll have new cards that say solar ambassador. We're going to be in introducing people to the concept of solar energy, which is now free, basically free, no money down. You just sign up. You get a system installed on your roof and it pays for itself out of the savings on your electric bills. Solar is so cheap now that Commonwealth Edison even says solar electricity on your roof is cheaper than paying ComEd. If you have a house and you, know, you could go solar, if you have a roof that's not covered with trees, you would be uh, a candidate to go solar. This, this briefcase. This is a demonstration briefcase of a, this is what the new solar panels look like. And this briefcase uh, has a little red light on it. It can tell when light falls on it, it charges the battery that comes with it. You can run your laptop, you can charge your cell phones, you can run a, a small, you know, some small lights if you're camping out. Um, this is a model of the new higher efficiency solar cells that have come down in price by over 95% in the last 12 years or so. The people in Illinois are not aware of this because the press doesn't cover it. We got the gas company. And the ComEd is beginning to offer rebates, although they don't advertise. So ComEd is positioning themselves to be like the Illinois tollway. They're just gonna charge a toll for using the wires from the wind farms, solar farms, everything else. But the way the new solar works, you generate a whole bunch of electricity in the daytime and just feed it into the grid Comment, you build up credits, and equal credits, kilowatt per kilowatt, and then at nighttime, you take a few kilowatts back out of the grid to run your house. So there's no battery backup on, on this type of system, but as long as ComEd has a few power plants up and running, they can meet uh, the minimum loads. Uh, so the, this type of solar, married with high efficiency everything, I'll give you an example. The, um, for those of you that didn't know, 
ComEd is looking at a total reduction of the total total number of, of kilowatts that they use. Aren't those materials polluting those panels? Uh, all materials pollute if you dump them in the river rather than recycle them. But there are there are there are solar powered plants now that are clean and they're not polluting the environment at all. Uh, and besides that, when you take into account the total amount, the total amount of energy that's used to produce coal, oil, gas, or nuclear, solar is the clear winner almost everywhere in the world. <laughs> so we have a question here later. We have a question here. This is an example of uh, the new uh, what can be powered by solar. The new lights use a one sixth to one eighth as much energy. And the LED lights uh, come in all different sizes, all different hundreds of different sizes and shapes. There. Has anybody ever attended one of the college demonstrations of the solar decathlon? Does anybody know what that is? It's Tim does. The solar decathlon is an engineering contest of colleges. They build 800 square foot transportable little houses and they're powered by the light that falls on them. They're teaching students how to build buildings, any kind of building, that everything in there is powered by solar electricity or solar hot water panels. They have no lines coming in at all. No coal, no nuclear, no gas, no oil. They're powered by the light that falls on the building. You can get a refrigerator that runs on two square yards of solar cells on the roof and it runs during the daytime and charges a small battery in the fridge at night and just it runs perpetually with two little tiny compressors that are super efficient. And that's uh, Rocky Mountain Institute. On the back of that card, Rocky Mountain Institute has been using a refrigerator like that since 1984 up in uh, Colorado. They have a 3,000 square foot house up in Colorado. There's no heating bill or a $5 electric bill. It was built in 1984. Today they're teaching people how to get, how to use your house as a source of income. The excess electricity you generate in the daytime that the house doesn't need, you feed it in the utility grid and get a check back. Uh, that is beginning to spread. So. Uh, Rocky Mountain Institute incidentally just built a 15,000 square foot uh, business center. 15,000 square feet is the type of uh, 10 small houses of that size. And the heating, can you guys keep it down back there? Uh, we're trying to, you know, it's, it's distracting. I'm trying to concentrate on the, the presentation here. Thank you very much. The Rocky Mountain Institute, that 15,000 square foot building, the, the heating system is the equivalent of 10, uh, 10, 13 hair dryers, 65,000 BTUs. A normal furnace is about 100,000 BTUs for one house. This is 65,000 BTUs, a small furnace, in other words. For a building, it's like 10 small houses. And they have energy efficient fans, rooms. It's all, all electric. And it's, there, it's a teaching center out in Rocky Mountain Institute. Many of you ever have vacation time, it's worth a train ride out there if you don't want to fly. Um, they have, they have uh, daily, weekly tours, just like you have a White House tour. Well, you can have a tour through the buildings and the actual house from the Rocky Mountain Institute to see what ultra-efficient housing and buildings look like that uh, basically would not use any fossil fuels at all. As I said, um, I'm going to be uh, working with uh, people that we meet in our business, heating and air conditioning, and giving away literature to help people go solar because a picture is worth a thousand words, they say. But a working model of something gives people the idea that, hey, that's here, that's now, it works, and it's not science fiction. We can't have somebody from the audience say, well, they will never see that because that doesn't exist. Well, I just brought a model of it in here, so it does exist. When Amory was given energy efficient talks in other countries around the world in 1988 from Rocky Mountain Institute, he constantly had to tell people what a motor, whatever you're trying to develop that's super efficient, that's been sold by this wholesaler over here in this country for the last two years. He's constantly telling people what has already existed for a while should be considered possible. Uh, for those of you that want one later, uh, 
This is our, our article we published, the top 10 blackout subjects in 1997. And in 1997, one of the things on here was houses without furnaces. And people said, well, that can't be true. That, if that were true, it would be on the news. And since 1979, they've been building houses in Schaumburg, Aurora, that line all the way to the Wisconsin border, houses that have no furnace, tiny heating system, and a $10 a month utility bill. So the technology exists to get off fossil fuels. Now the new the Green New Deal, for those of you that haven't seen it yet, they're talking about weatherization of all buildings in the country. Weatherization of all buildings to get off fossil fuel. Put up solar panels, uh, solar panels that have glass tubes in them that heat hot water. Those things are cost effective. You can effectively heat your hot water without burning any fossil fuel. You guys got a question back there? Uh, is, uh, what, what did I say that's funny? We're going to be dependent on oil forever. And we just had a, a statement from the back there that says we're going to be dependent on oil forever. Well, uh, that, that shows you this is what this is what I've been talking about since 2007 uh, with Censor News. How the main the mainstream media, corporate media now says it's no longer mainstream. It's corporate billionaire-owned media. They maintain people in such a bubble of mythology. Ordinary, decent people look just like the rest of us maintaining a bubble of mythologies to make a statement like that. Well, we're going to be dependent on fossil fuel or whatever. No, That's we're really not. Wild. If we don't get off fossil fuel, 90% of the human race is going to be gone by the end of the century. <laughs> They're talking about the sixth extinction already <laughs> underway. There's, there's a, and that book is listed in here, by the way, on this thing I just handed out. The End of Ice and the Sixth Extinction are two classic books that I would highly recommend. Uh, so, well, I we, like the list. Charlie just said we spoke on that. I do. Yeah, well, that's, that's how we maintain people in going along in a bubble is because we don't speak about it next week or the week after that. We, the, that's, that's the way the media does it. They speak about it once. And then they say, oh, we talked about that once. We, we don't need to talk about that again. So it gives people the impression that it's not important. That's why these students are walking out of school every week from now on, is because they say, we have to do something about this. And it's, it's not beyond her capability. As, as Greta said, uh, she told those people in Davos, she said, we don't need any more research. We don't need anybody giving hopeful speeches. We don't need you to tell us to go to school to learn how to solve the climate problem. The climate crisis has already been solved. The answers are all here. The machinery is all here to solve it. What we need is action. Global action to transfer money from where it's being spent now into something effective that will put an end to the burning of fossil fuel. What is China doing about it? China, uh, question, she said, that's a good point. China is going green very, very fast. There's a book out called, uh, I didn't bring, I can't bring 60 or 80 pounds of books to one of these talks. Uh, you know, you do the best you can. There's a book called, Can China Solve the Climate Crisis? And it talks about all the green programs that China is implementing, electric cars, building tons of solar panels, wind machines, high efficiency buildings. China is, is uh, basically leading the world right now. As well as a nuclear power and industry. Going green. And uh, I, I agree with them. Nuclear power China is collapsing. What? There, there are some people that are talking about keeping the nukes that we have running for a year or two because they, they, give, they provide electricity while you can shut down a coal plant. Now, after we uh, get enough uh, renewables in place, then ultimately we can shut down the nukes also, because they're not competitive with wind and solar. Because, uh, if you get you know, the renewables, and uh, what's holding us back? What's holding us back? There's a question period later. We need to make that point during the speech, uh, as, as Greta has said, and, and the other kids. What's holding us back? is billionaire predators. Like she said at Davos, she said many uh, there's many billionaires that have known for decades exactly what priceless 
pieces of environment they were destroying for profit, for obscene profits. That's what we have. We have billionaire predators going for obscene profits, and they don't care about the future of the environment. They care about short-term, 90-day profits on the stock market or wherever else it is, and many of these people have a mental illness. They can look at a pile of money, 20, 30, 40 billion dollars, and say, my family's not secure yet, I need another 50 billion. That's not greed, that's a psychopathic illness. And <laughs> unless we're, unless we're uh, as a society, we have to come together and do something to counteract the efforts of these billionaire predators. Uh, we have to regulate. They we, we, need, we need regulation. Yeah. Uh, if we re-regulate, we need a, we need a top tax rate. You know, and, uh, incidentally, uh, they're, 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 um, the, new, the people that just got elected to Congress are calling for a marginal tax rate of 70%. We had a marginal tax rate of 91% during the Eisenhower years, and the middle class was building because they said, once once you get beyond a certain level of income, we're going to start to tax the excess at 91%. Because nobody nobody should have enough money that they can say, well, I, I have this amount of wealth and there's there's 200,000 people that are starving because they don't have enough income on their jobs or anything else. That's what the higher tax rate is all about, to level out the inequality. There's tons of books on inequality right now also. It's, uh, the climate crisis is directly related to uh, massive inequality. They also privatized the utilities. And People don't want to work. They privatized different, the government regulations. The, this book talks about that. Uh, the libraries have this on disc. It's 17 discs. I listened to it in about two weeks in my car. And this is the best book I've seen. It's called This Changes Everything. Capitalism versus the climate. Is that we we will support capitalism and continue to see climate destruction, or we will regulate capitalism. Nobody's talking about getting rid of capitalism. They're talking about uh, regulating it. Do something to regulate. Regulate Billionaire greed, and uh, she's talking about the climate crisis being if we solve the climate crisis is also an opportunity to reshape our economic system so you know so that we don't have homeless people sleeping under bridges we don't have veterans that are homeless that are committing suicide so these things should not be happening in a rich country like this we they're right they're, they're a, we're a very very rich country they're probably the richest in the world but the money is stuck in maybe a hundred bank accounts of billionaires that have, are hoarding trillions of dollars offshore. Uh, what's funny about that? Did I, say, did I make a joke, or uh, should we uh, actually uh, reframe that in the, in, in the guise of a joke? This lie is going to demand. So, yeah, they don't care about demand. But if you if you log on to Log on to Common Dreams, or just look up Greta Thunberg, the school strike. You'll see the growing number of groups that are calling for intelligent change around the world to do something about the loss of species, the loss of the rainforest, the loss of coastal cities as they're flooding every year. It's, it's a, a multi-layered total environmental destruction. It's not just a few rich people aren't going to be able to live near the shore of Miami anymore. It's a global problem. And that's why the 2014 edition, the 2014 edition of this book, Censored News, talked about why that, that was their number one out of the 25 blacked out stories. That was the number one story of the year in 2014. The media, and the media still if you notice, they, they report environmental disasters, but they're not making the connection between climate change worldwide. It's not global warming, per se, it's climate change. Climate change is the correct term, because the climate is changing all over the world. Many people are dying in heat waves in countries where they never saw them before. People are dying in cold waves where they, they've never seen 10, 15 below zero. Uh, it's 30 degrees colder than you know their average. Uh, 
couple of weeks ago, we were a lot colder here than it was in northern Alaska. <clears throat> you know, these these are there's pictures of the ice um, being ice free at the North Pole in, in many more months out of the year. They used to have a little open spots in the summer. Now they 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 have cruise ships sailing right through there uh, on, on cruises like the cruises off the Alaska coast. Now you can just sail right through the North Pole because it's not covered with ice year-round anymore. And this is no longer a debatable issue. So... Can the UN stop the U.S. from doing this? The question is, can the UN stop the U.S. from doing this? Uh, don't know. Uh, the UN is, so is dominated by big money from the United States, but other, other, country, other countries are beginning to rebel. So... Um, would you? Well, I think maybe we'll just go to questions. And, Andy, you want to do that? Yeah. Andy, what? let's get your presentation. Oh, okay. You still have more to say. That's, um, I've got, um, finish your speech. Let's let him finish up. Yeah. Let's let Andy finish his speech, and then we'll go to question and answers. All the questions you guys have been reading nothing but fake news. I'll briefly cover, I, I gave a talk here, here's the 10 subjects, okay, for those of you that don't know what we do, it's on my card, my brother and I run a database translation service, we, we take databases of forensic evidence, published in books, scientific evidence, a lot of it, and translate that into a one page cliff notes like this that you've been reading five minutes, because nobody's got time to read 20 books like this. And knowledge on certain subjects, on the blacked out subjects, knowledge exists in books, but it's not in any of the major media. So if you don't read books or look at these articles on the internet, you wouldn't know these things are happening. The top ten, this is one of the uh, favorite flyers for a lot of people that have kept it for years. We reprint it every now and then. This was the top ten blacked out subjects in 1997. Five of them were too bad to be true. Five of them were too good to be true. I, I have a bunch of copies here. If anybody that wants one, you can take it with you. Um, but um, on the side that were too bad to be true that nobody could think about was media blackouts. You know, the hunt for nuclear weapons in American cities since November 1975. They made the decision not to tell the American people they were hunting for terrorist nuclear bombs until the day of the first blast. When we finally can't find one and defuse it before it goes off, and we lose some city, a uh, chunk of a city like Hiroshima and Nagasaki were damaged, then we got to tell the American people there's a problem with nuclear power, because that's where the bomb material comes from, right? The nuclear power industry, worldwide. And here, this, this sounded like science fiction back in 1997. Wealth transfer to the rich. The reshaping of American society into two classes, rich and poor. Does that sound familiar today to anybody? That was 20 years ago, one of the top 10 blacked out subjects. People say, well, that can't be true. Our, our democratic government would never allow that. Then we got Bush, we got Reagan, we got Cheney, a bunch of others. And of course, since 1985, since 1985, submarines, missiles, planes have all been obsolete for delivering nuclear weapons. Nuclear weapons are so small and compact, the blast power of the Hiroshima bomb comes in something the size of a football. You can carry it around in a large purse. That was the subject of a report called the 12 Bomb War. Any country on Earth can be eliminated with 12 of those portable bombs. Six in cities, six near nuclear power plants, and the country is gone. And the fifth one, of course, was Still, these are still covered up in the United States by the media, by the way. The 50-year government cover-up of UFOs interacting with the human race. And recently, you can watch videos all over the Internet of government programs that are now tracking the other four civilizations that are interacting with us. Count the human race, there's five of us out there that our government recognizes and uh, they're just not telling us about it. Does anybody know why they don't want us to know about alien civilizations? What the real reason is? The Vatican. Not the Vatican. What else? What, 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 what is it about the aliens that they don't want us to know about? They don't want us to know about. Their transportation. 
Their, their spacecraft don't That's use oil, oil, coal, gas, or nuclear power. Oh. If, if that free energy were made available to the human race, it would transform everything. And see, the heckling is beginning to start in the back again when you list a piece of reality. That, that's not, not UFOs is something that is, we need more evidence. It's real and all over the place. And that's what Jim Mars said in 1997. He wrote a book called the Alien Agenda. He said, this is not a book about aliens. Aliens are here, they're all over the place, get used to it. He said, this is a book about the government cover-up and why they've been covering it up. Because major religions have been teaching that we were the only thing that God created. Well, the Vatican a few years back issued a statement saying it's okay to rec recognize that God created other races. Because people are carrying cell phone cameras. They're filming it up close and personal and sending their film into the Vatican. These little people walking around, standing next to your cousin, interacting, all kinds of stuff. It's happening all over the world, but a pilot, a pilot for American Airlines said, if I turn in, if I, if I testify and, and tell, tell people what the co-pilot and I saw on this trip to uh, you know, off the west coast of America. If we report that we were followed by an alien ship as big as an aircraft carrier, if I actually report that, write it up, I got to turn in my pilot's license and I'm done. Yeah. So this is why pilots, uh, from any, anybody that's not retired and independently wealthy, they don't talk about it because it'll cost you your job. Now, Japan Airliner, they don't have that uh, specific thing, uh, uh, Japan Airlines reported and uh, reported back to Japan and he didn't lose his job. It was oh, 15, 20 years ago off the coast of Alaska. All the passengers saw it too. They, they were followed by some ship in the air for about 20 minutes. It was as big as an aircraft carrier. This stuff is going on all over the world. But that's a whole, you, you can spend hours and hours and hours watching videos, reading books. There's all kinds of testimony that's been uh, credibly vetted all over the world. It's just, it's not in American news. On the good side, the side that's too good to be true, but people say the same thing. Well, if that's true, that would be on the news. There's no way they would suppress that if that's actually true. Uh, and so you got the houses without furnaces, with low energy bills, ten dollars a month to eat a house. You got hundred mile per gallon cars. All of the major car companies have been testing hundred mile per gallon prototypes since the mid 1980s. And in fact, in 1980, Volkswagen had a four door. 98 mile per gallon diesel rabbit that we would go from coast to coast on one tank of gas, 100 miles per gallon. I mean, they could carry a 30 gallon tank and cover the country in fact. You had one of the most controversial back then that has been completely vindicated or validated by a huge amount of forensic evidence published by doctors and scientists all over the world and reported in all other countries now since 2008. This is 1997 we wrote this because the database was big back then. It was like the database on asbestos and cigarettes. Well, what was happening was other countries were curing people of most of the illnesses that were misdiagnosed as AIDS. And now there are books out published that tell you the story of why so many people died. A lot of people died and the media, the media in this country told us those people were dying of AIDS. They weren't. They were being poisoned by the AIDS doctors. They've taken a fatal field of character. Now, we should get Heckley from the back instantly. This is one of the two subjects that's blacked out along with 9 11. The cure for AIDS. You don't tell people what to do with the I'm not telling anybody what to do, Charlie. You're heckling me again. You don't I'm, I'm told one fool at a time. One, one fool at a time. Let Charlie speak. All right, Charlie. Listen to Andy Anderson. I just gave you a summary of 2,700 doctors. I'm telling you what the doctors are saying. It's not my opinion. When I, when I give you a fact that's vetted by thousands of doctors, it's a fact that they produce, not my opinion. And you seem to not be able to grasp that after 12 years of me giving speeches here. I don't understand why you can't grasp that one simple concept. It's not my opinion. That Smoking four packs a day is not good for your health. That's not my opinion. That's tens of thousands of doctors. Very. The fourth thing was energy efficiency revolution. And we've seen that in the last 20 years. The new light bulbs use one-sixth as much. Houses without furnaces. Buildings with no heating system, just cooling system. Total energy revolution starting 
going on and the media doesn't talk about it because it would give us the idea that we could do something about climate change. And of course the fifth one back there was the health care revolution. Affordable treatments that work rather than promoting, you know, promoting health and wellness is now recognized as much cheaper than treating illness after people become sick. There's wellness centers all over the place and all over the world. In fact, other countries, most other countries are <coughs> oriented toward keeping people well rather than treating them after they get sick. Just the opposite of what we have in this country. And in the last 20 years, <coughs> I see some of you making notes there, so uh, might as well just <coughs> pass this stack out for anybody that wants one, because the references and references and books are listed on the back. Can you pass it out, please? Yeah. All we had in 1997, I didn't have my first computer. Uh, with, you know, there wasn't really any good Google search engines back in 97. That was 22 years ago. But now. These top ten subjects have been totally vetted by hundreds of articles each all over the internet and reference books. Um, for those of you that have, on, on the back of that card incidentally, there's uh, at the bottom of it is Patriots Question 911. That's another one you can't talk about here without heck, or at least I can't talk about it because the last thing I want to say and summarize where we are. Where do we get the money? Where do we get the money to pay for the new Green Deal and the World War II mobilization that is needed to solve the problems? Well, there's three there's three subjects that form what I gave a talk called the, the Top Ten Censored Stories of 2014. On the back of that, every, I've got everyone can have a copy of this if they want it. It's called the Trillion Dollar Golden Triangle. There's three big money makers who are reporting collectively more than a trillion dollars a year down the rat hole. One of them is the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan and uh, military operations all over the world. Smedley Butler wrote the book on that, War is a Racket. War, those wars are existing for control of oil, but more than that, to give our military something to do so that the corporations that make all the hardware for the military can make bundles of money selling to the military. You make more money selling to the military in wartime than you do selling the same kind of products to Kmart or Walmart or Home Depot in peacetime. So that's why we have a permanent war economy that was kicked off by Bush Cheney after the myth, uh, after the, uh, the Hollywood style event known as 9-11 was created. That was sold, it was like a Hollywood movie. And what is known now, that's number two on the triangle. The, the, the permanent war economy is driven by the myth of a Muslim attack on America. When in reality, there was no Muslim attack on America at all. There was a giant real estate fraud in New York. The developer, would you like to heckle again, Charlie? Who did it? Who was behind it? Silverstein? We don't know actually who was behind it per se. We know who profitable. We know that Silverstein, uh, the, the fellow that had the 99-year lease on the towers, he took out billions of dollars of terrorist insurance a few weeks before 9-11 was <coughs> happened. And uh, were, for those of you that don't know, there weren't two buildings destroyed. There were seven that day. Three towers and four other buildings. The whole trade center, uh, was, the buildings were either totally destroyed or damaged beyond repair so that they could build a new tower on the site after the rubble was cleared. It's called, were they call it the Freedom Tower now? Has anybody seen it? Anybody been to New York to see the new tower yet? I haven't. I just read about it. Yeah, it's called a Freedom Tower, right? Freedom Tower? Well, the, the plans for building that tower on the site were in pre preparation in, uh, in the in late 90s before 9-11 ever happened. 9-11 is recognized as the most successful hoax that's ever been perpetrated on a pop our, our population in broad daylight. So we say we can save 
uh, you know, save a trillion dollars a year on the military, you could save how many hundreds of billions of dollars if the effects of 9-11 were eliminated. You've got Homeland Security. When, uh, does anybody remember when our country was referred to America or the country instead of the homeland? The yeah. homeland was what they called Germany under Nazi rule. Father. Okay, the, the third thing, the third place you can get money, hundreds of billions of dollars, is by recognizing that the World Organization put out a report, World Health Organization reported in 2008, they said the AIDS epidemic is over. We're sorry they made a mistake. It's not an infectious disease. And so, and also the HIV tests are bogus. They react to everything but HIV. They're using veterans now as guinea pigs. They're, they want to test veterans with the bogus HIV test. And if they test positive because they've been using medicines or stuff that affect their immune system, they want to start them on medicines that cost 20000 a year. So some drug company is making a tub of a bottle of pills and everything for $50 for the chemical, and they want to sell it as 20000 20, per person for one pill a day to keep yourself safe if you test HIV positive. They want to use veterans. Did they create AIDS? No. The, the, the question is, was AIDS created? No. The idea that HIV was making people sick, that was what was created and announced at a press conference. And by 1987, there were already dozens of scientists who were saying, hey, that's a harmless retrovirus. Other things are making people sick, and many of those things are treatable and curable. But all that knowledge was totally blacked out by the United States. The CDC and the NIH had total control of the Journal of American Association, the medical journals. Only one journal article got through and published in America, and that was from Professor Duesberg in 1987. He blew the whistle on him. He said, oh, by the way, i just thought you'd like to know HIV is one of 50 harmless retroviruses. They don't cause any kind of illness. He said, my lab hasn't looked into it yet, but I can tell you that simple virus is not it. And by 1992, they formed a group called the Scientific Group for the Reappraisal of AIDS. The website is called VirusMyth. You want to learn all about this? There's 2,700 scientists and doctors right now listed in that one site. And there's other groups around the world that are educating their public and saving lives as people get pulled back from the myth of having HIV AIDS. There is no HIV AIDS. That's a myth. There are people that are sick that have been told they had AIDS when they had pneumonia, tuberculosis, a whole 29 other illnesses that have been around a long time were renamed as AIDS cases in 1984 to get the ball rolling that we had sick people spreading AIDS. It's, it's, the, big, it's the biggest medical the medicine myth. Kill or no? Yeah, the medicine, uh, the treatment, the virus was harmless. The treatment was fatal. And if you're old enough, you remember somebody that we were told died of AIDS. Well, look back in their records and see if they were being treated as an AIDS patient. If they were taking the first drug, if they were taking the capsules, the antiviral drug called AZT. Thousands of doctors have published research on that. That was not an antiviral drug. It was a fatal chemotherapy drug that stopped the growing cells all over your body. Nobody takes chemo for more than a few weeks like that, because if you take it for the rest of your life, as Burroughs Welcome, the drug company said, we're going to make billions, and this is going to be 100% fatal. There will be no survivors. And there were no survivors of the people that took it. The only people that survived the AIDS epidemic were the ones that stopped taking the toxic medication. You can, if you log on to that VirusMyth site or others, there's tons of videos out there that show long-term survivors. People that were told they were given a death sentence in 1987, just like Magic Johnson was said he was HIV positive in 1992, you know, I, stopped his basketball career. Well, Magic, if he stood out in front of a camera and said, I was never HIV positive, they just told me I was with the bogus test, he'd probably have a car accident or something. Uh, just like Charlie Sheen. Charlie Sheen was pulled off of the most popular te television show in the country because he was using his fame and notoriety to talk about 9-11. And so this is how they keep uh, this basic knowledge uh, from going public on the media. What? No, and AZT is sold in other countries and people are dying in other countries. But they banned it in America when they banned it in 1997 because the word was leaking out that it was a toxic fatal medicine, that basically the death toll just kind of stopped. And now they're announcing that they have long-term pills that are uh, treating long-term HIV. That's also a myth. They're, 
You can read all about it, look at the videos. There's uh, people can live with it. Isn't it the same with cancer? That's something different. Hold on. Shit. I had a book. Something just dropped. Yeah, that's a book. There, there are books that summarize a huge amount of information that's published in other books. And the summaries get better every year. Say, so today you don't have to read 50 books. You can log on to uh, the CDC website and learn what the basic facts are of secondhand smoke as a hazard to young kids with asthma and breathing problems. That's not a myth or an opinion. It's published evidence. You don't have to read 20 or 30 books on the, the, the problems of inhaling asbestos dust if you work in a brake factory. The answer is known. And you'll see advertisements on television for the lawsuits that are handling the people that are coming down with lung cancer because they worked in a factory where they weren't told they were breathing asbestos dust. This book, Positively False, exposed, the title of this is Positively False, Exposing the Myths Around HIV and AIDS. This is the 16th anniversary edition of a book that was published came out of England, Channel 4 and Metatel, that's like our 60 Minutes in America. They have been doing documentaries on long-term survivors, people that were getting sick if they weren't taking their AIDS medicine. They got the, they got the fatal diagnosis in 1987. They were told they were going to die. Their friends started taking the medicine. They all died. And so these people said, well, we're just going to wait a while. We, we feel healthy. And now you have films, films and videos of long-term survivors all over the world they didn't take the toxic AIDS medicine. They stay totally healthy. They don't. They don't have any more of the number of colds or anything else that ordinary people have, because HIV is either harmless or non-existent, like the Australians are saying. And there's a debate on whether HIV is even a full retrovirus or just particles produced by your immune system. But in any case, what we were told in the media of all those people dying of AIDS. They weren't dying of AIDS, they were being intentionally poisoned by the AIDS doctors and they made billions of dollars getting rid of a generation of gay men. That's the story that's emerging. And if you think that doctors wouldn't be involved in something unethical if the money was big enough, look up something called the Tuskegee Experiment. That's considered the most disgraceful episode in American medicine. And uh, that was back in the 30s. They gave free health care to uh, like 600 African American, mostly men, that had syphilis. And right. they monitored them long after penicillin was developed, which was considered a treatment or cure. So the Democrats did it. What? <laughs> what? The Democrats what did that have to do with AIDS? That that was a precursor to showing people So you're telling me they killed like ten million people? Uh, I don't know if it, I don't know the number total. I uh, the number grows as you study more and more people, like the people in Africa that have malaria. A lot of those people were told they had AIDS, okay. and they died from taking the medicine. All right. So, so we're ready to go to question yeah. and answers? Wait, uh, is everybody ready? Anybody got any questions died, yet? Man. I got one, Andy. Yeah. That's they had the wrong. <laughs> what, what are the best sites that will promote your argument that 9-11 was a uh, was a med a false flag? was a false flag operation. Okay. Uh, the first question we had was. Tim asked a really great question, and it's very easy to answer. He said, "What are the best sites that will give evidence that 9/11 that the official story was false and that it was an inside job?" Well, if you log on to, on that card I gave you, do you have a card, Tim? I, I Take do. a look at the bottom. Okay. Well, Patriots Question 911 is one of the best because it lists the groups of patriots, retired Top Gun military and commercial pilots, hundreds of them in one site, uh, military intelligent officials and professionals, retired people who spent 30 years in military intelligence, crash scene investigators, there's a website called 911truth.org, I think it is. Um, is Patriots part of Project Censored? There's no pa uh, Project Censored is something altogether different, although. 
project censored from 20, this is the 2011 edition, 2011. From 2006 to 2011, and it's in the archives, you don't have to buy the books. Oh, oh. Uh, need a shelf up here. Um, from 26, 2006 to 2011, they had a chapter in there, one of the top 25 blacked out stories each year was the media was blacking out the forensic evidence that the official story of 9-11 was false. Professor Griffin, one of the early books he published, Professor David Ray Griffin, who was like the Albert Einstein of his field, the man has impeccable, would you like to heckle again, Charlie, with your ignorance? Whoa, it's not that I Because you're, you're presenting yourself as, look at me, I'm dumber than a fifth grader, I'm goddamn proud of it. Oh, Why do you represent yourself that way, Charlie? I don't understand. One for the time. I just, I can't understand why you represent yourself as dumber than a fifth grader. When, when you, obviously, you have more knowledge on railroads than anybody we've run across. No personal Well, that's not a personal attack, that's just a question. Because that's what's happening here, and I'm not going to put up with it anymore. Um, the, uh, Tim's question, to answer Tim's question, there, there is a flood of credible evidence in every kind of media you can think of. Video, audio, books, websites, um, videos you can watch. Also, for those of you that don't know, the grand jury, the grand jury has been assembled in New York in January of this year to hear all the forensic evidence that lawyers have put together on the crime of 9-11. 3,000 people were murdered. There's no statute of limitations on murder. They're going to hear all the evidence of the different people in the Bush Cheney okay. administration that helped orchestrate and sell it. All right, let's okay, does that answer your question, Tim? Or do you need any more? Well, at least it gives me a start of looking, and I can see that there's, uh, so far, several myths propagated. But let's get to other questions. Thank you, Andy. Other question here. Uh, over here. Try you, you, the man. You. Okay. I'm given to understand, and anybody can answer this if they know anything about it, that something happened or is happening in France that the corporate media does not want us to know about. Can you tell me anything about that? Uh, uh, can you repeat the question? The question and I'll repeat the question. Uh -huh. He said there's something happening in France that the corporate media is not talking about. Well, I think it might be related to what's called the yellow vest protest. They're protesting austerity and a bunch of other things. They Basically, they're protesting the same kind of things that Trump is trying to do in America. Okay. And the French people... Oh. Taxes? Everybody knows about the Yellow Vest movement in France. Yeah, it's not the... Well, he didn't. Uh, but, you know, the Yellow right. Vest movement, the Yellow Vest movement has not been covered that much I've been told in the, the mainstream media in America. The media in America don't want to give people the idea that if you protest for civil disobedience or anything, that it works. They want people to think that just keep your head down, right. keep going to work, and, and you know, don't protest or anything. That's that's the way to be a good American. Okay. Uh, yeah. Over here. I have a good question. Yeah. What? Why do you think the Tuggerty men with the AIDS? Why do they talk a gay men? Okay, uh, the question was, uh, on one of these subjects, why why were gay men targeted by uh, the AIDS doctors? Well, there's, if you look it up, it's in the archives, the CDC wanted to make an announcement to uh, the doctors that were treating the first AIDS patients. The CDC did research and they said, this is obviously caused by use, overuse of recreational drugs. Right. If you party on recreational drugs for 10 years, you'll run down your immune system. And the CDC wanted to make that announcement, and they were overruled by the people in the Reagan administration. They said, don't tell these people they can get their health back. The Reagan administration had people that were highly homophobic. And so they said, let's announce a failed new virus, and then we'll put a medicine on the market that'll finish them off. Which is what they did. They got rid of the AIDS doctors were paid to poison 300,000 people, and that is the reality of it. And nobody wants to face that because it's a big, huge crime, like 9/11. People don't want to think that we have people in America that could get a false flag operation. Let's kill 3,000 Americans. We'll blame it on the Muslims, and we'll have 20 years worth of war profits. Okay, that's what they did. Go. Next question. 
Next you, one. Where can I see some cool UFO videos at? Uh, if you have, where can you see cool UFO videos? Uh, the question is, how much time do you have to get sucked into the black hole? Because there's dozens and dozens and dozens of hours of videos you can log right onto. Look at uh, UF videos, uh, UFOs over Everywhere. France or UFOs over Texas, and then you come up with tons of hits. Yeah. They're, they're videos. They're, they're all over well, the internet. I, I, I feel with the proliferation of uh, videos, we'd see a lot more UFOs. Instead, we just see more people, more cops killing people. Uh, well, uh, it's not yet certain how much um, the internet is being uh, monitored, or uh, the search engines are, uh, you know, eliminating uh, people searching for certain things. Uh, there was a there was a video. People made a, a video that went viral for a while about 9/11, and all of a sudden, if you did a Google search, it just it, it disappeared. Andy, why don't you just tell them about the National UFO Reporting Center? Yeah, well, there's yeah, there's uh, as I said, uh, from the Project Blue Book back in the 50s all the way forward. You log on to any of those things, and you'll find a bunch of good video. Uh, check out the latest from. Uh, Pictures from the moon from China, their rover up there. They, they, China has just released a whole bunch of pictures on the internet without fanfare about the glass structures on the moon. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, there's a, a ton of stuff. What website can you go to that? Uh, just, uh, I don't know the website, just do a Google search for uh, China pictures from they're the moon. They're not going to be, so they're not censoring UFO stuff? No, not, not all of it. Oh, okay. I mean, some of the really good stuff that our astronauts saw, that was censored. Uh, they, they weren't able to talk about it. Yes? Uh, if China's doing all this with uh, solar panels, why is China the biggest producer of new nuclear and power plants? Well, I think the theory was if they could produce them, mass produce them cheap enough, they could get rid of their coal stations as fast as possible. I don't think they're planning on running nukes forever. But I think they may be looking at the 12-year window and saying uh, nuclear might cut down fossil fuel burning for a decade or 15 years or something while we're totally converting to renewable solar wind power. It's a question of what to do right now. If, if you've got nukes up and running, keep them running uh, and shut down coal stations. That, that's what the thinking is all about. I'm, I'm still researching the actual numbers. Weren't they building like one a month? Uh, yeah, they, uh, but it, that program has been going on for a while, and it's just recently, as far as I know, it's just recently that the world has come to realize, with the new pictures that have come in the last year or so, how fast the ice melting is, is melting at the poles. They thought we had 40 or 50 years. That's why they were building a generation of nukes that would be online in 5, 10, 12 years from now. They didn't know we had 12 years to get off fossil fuel. So it's, uh, everybody is scrambling around the world to do something instructive, and, and, and it's just growing. You had a question, Ellen? You're right. next. I guess um, what I wanted, it's kind of a question, I'm going to roll it into one, that you had mentioned the two most censored topics in the, in the, at the complex, and I thought I have a hypothesis about that. Um, and one is this. What's your question? Well, here's, so this, I'd like Andy's feedback on what he said he was going to talk about, the two most censored, he has an idea of it. I, what about the topic, how do you know something's censored? You present it, I presented the idea of doing a history of censorship and at the complex, and Charlie, you know, said no, and kind of pushed me a different direction. So it gets done in, covertly, in a way, you know. One is, you know, I've always, Charlie talked about being an FBI censor, basically put in here to keep these topics, keep us from coming to truth. By, you know, like Orwell said, say what they don't want you to say, everything okay. else is PR. So we're getting, like, actively counterintelligence. Ellen, I'd like, like to ask you okay? what you want. That's let, let me ask, ask my you. hypothesis. Ellen, Ellen, I want to know why Charlie didn't want her to do a censored news story. Or a thing on censored news that no. might be different. What I talk, talk about the complex. Can you answer that, Charlie? How the complex censors stories. How does Charlie censor stories? 
Which ones That's does he not question. bring to Alan's got a good question here. How, how, how is the complex censor certain stories that you can't talk about here? What? Do we, how about the Red Scare and FBI and your role in the FBI and how you well, edit you know stories? You're, you don't, you're not working times. for the FBI? You spoke three times at the college. You, but the, the FBI talked here? Did about, you not speak three times to the college on whatever you wanted? Yes or no? No, I wanted to no. talk about Sherman, yes about Sherman Skolnick no. and his role in the college and you you said no, don't do that. Okay, so we'll we'll switch it to Did Sherman Skolnick. He was an investigative times. journalist. Hey, I'm not going to leave. We reached it. This is a personal attack. You spoke three times. I'm talking about censorship. You wanted to. No. So shut up, bitch. Oh, personal attack. Personal attack. Wait a minute. And then you call me up again. Can I go to the same topic? That's out of order. No. Yes, sir. She's attacking me. All right, let's. Uh, no, you are the Lord. Yeah, the rules. Stop with those words. Yeah. Yeah. Order! Order! Order. You don't, you don't Stop with those words. I didn't come here to get accused by this How censorship works. That's yeah, what I'm saying. Cool. No, you, the you state you censors us. State sponsored censorship. No, I'm Ellen. Ellen, I you think to come to Charlie's defense, yeah. you have spoken here three times. I'm gonna, I'll talk about that. Subject. We'll see how far I go. Okay. We we okay, can. Let's, let's go on. Let's try to cool off. You try that again, Andy. The site's over. Try 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 to get the decorum here. Let's uh, order. order. No, she what, did not. Order. One at a time. Let's go for it. Order. Would you guys please? Okay. I'm gonna go you guys alone. On my 9/11. On my 9/11. Do you believe that planes actually flew into the World Trade Centers? Okay, the question he asked is, do I believe the planes flew into the Trade Centers? Well, all I can tell you is uh, what the Top Gun pilots and veteran aircraft crash scene investigators are reporting. They said, if any planes actually hit the towers, they were seen by eyewitnesses in New York, but they weren't filmed by the media. What we were shown in the media, as Hollywood producers have said, was a crappy video image of a plane sliding into the building like butter. Those the images we were shown on television weren't the image of a plane crashing into the towers. That's not what a plane crash looks like. And all the crash scene investigators said, said the same thing. The towers were built to shred any plane that hit the wall. They were they were they were built to absorb a hit from an off course squad of Navy fighters or something in the fog. But, uh, they had like they you know, small steel telephone poles all the way around so there would have been hundreds of tons of aluminum confetti and wings and wheels flying everywhere if a plane actually hit the side of the building. So what we were shown on television was not a real plane crash. It was videos inserted into the news from different angles. They had different, and one of them showed a plane going right through with a fiberglass nose coming out the other side after going through the steel core. It was obviously fake, and they cut the video right away, went to black and came back about a second later after they realized their mistake. The people that were watching the transmission on the mainstream TVs. So the, the pilots have pretty much debunked everything we were shown on television about uh, how fast the planes were going, uh, all of it. Uh, John Lear, the inventor of uh, the Lear jet, uh, his son, I think it is, John Lear, he has a video out you can watch, and he, his video says, absolutely, he doesn't think any planes hit the towers. He said, what we were shown is not what a plane crash looks like. And, for, and the, the, the commercial pilots that fly those jumbo jets, they've all said, and the Top Gun pilots too, they said it's laughable to think uh -huh. that uh, any person from an Arab country could take a few hours of flying a Piper Cub and sit down in the, the cockpit of a computer-controlled jumbo jet and steer it through the clouds and make a perfect hit without missing by a hundred feet on either side. He said that that's that's like sitting a monkey down at a typewriter and telling him to make a Shakespeare sonnet. It's just it's laughable on the face of it. So, but we don't have to debate that issue because. The only thing you need to know about the towers is they didn't collapse. They were converted to dust in the air before anything hit the ground. If you look at the videos closely, and they're all over the internet, you can see girders being blown apart on all four sides, while the rest of the building 
is being converted to dust by massive explosives from the top down. It was illusion, an illusion created by the demolition company, whoever it was, that packed those buildings professionally. Okay. Because on architects and engineers, they say, Ed Astor has a video, he said, look at Building 7. Okay. He said, we've seen this before. It's like an old hotel coming down. It takes months to prepare a building like that. Right. It can't be done in one Five day. minutes. 9 11 wasn't a surprise. Quick. Five minutes for questions. You got a question over here? Yeah. I want to know why, when someone has a legitimate disagreement with you, you always demean them by calling them hecklers. I really believe these planes knocked those buildings down. Twenty million people died of AIDS, and and I believe that, and the most of, most of the uh, scientists believe that, and 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 I have a legitimate. Uh, uh, idea about that. And so do I. I do not dispute your figure that 20 million people died. More. Maybe more. All I'm saying is the doctors around the world, if you take care to learn what the doctors have learned in the last 25 years, they've learned that those people didn't have HIV AIDS. They had other problems and they uh, the people were dying. The mass of the people died because they were taking the first AIDS medicine. And once uh, when that medicine was put on the market in 1987, the death rate was went up tenfold, and people started dying 30,000 a year. And then after about 1997, when the word was getting around that people were dying from the medicine, they banned it, and the death toll went way down. I read a lot of newspapers. I never read that in the newspaper. Only you say that. Did, no. Oh, Did you exactly not hear my speech talking point. about exactly censored news? his points. That's, the idea. That's, that's my point. That's one of the top three blacked out subjects in America. If a reporter, I talked to a reporter in Ohio, and there was a lawyer that was, you know, they sued, uh, there was a lawsuit case. I called him up and said, do you want information on that? Well, she was on the air on the 5 o'clock news, this lawyer that was fighting an AIDS case. By Monday, this is Thursday. I sent her stuff on Friday. By Monday, her office was closed phone disconnected, she was gone. If you get national recognition and you ruffle anybody's feathers on that one, especially back then, uh, you could just disappear. So th th that's that's one of the three most radioactive subjects you can't talk about on radio, television, newspapers. It's in books. It's, you have to read a book and see what's being reported all over the world. But you have a lot of conspiracy theories. No, no, I, I'm not talking about conspiracies. I don't, I don't talk about conspiracies. I tell you, there are, it's, it, you know, there are conspiracies. Well, if you're talking about a conspiracy, yeah, the official story of 9-11 is the conspiracy. That's the conspiracy theory because not a piece of it has any basis in scientific reality. Every piece of what we were told has been debunked by hundreds of thousands of scientists, pilots, scholars all over the world. This is not some kind of opinion. They debunked it, and I, I, you want to read a good book? Check this one out. This is called Debunking 9-11, Debunking. It's David Ray Griffin, his answer to the popular mechanics and other defenders of the official conspiracy story. The official conspiracy is a transparent myth. It has no basis in reality whatsoever. And unless you're willing to read books or look at sources outside the monitored mainstream media, you can't ever learn any of this stuff. I want you to buy those books. That's what this is. Yeah. Well, you can log on and read okay. it for free on the internet. Uh, we're just about ready to go to rebuttals here. One last question. So, this is a sort of larger international relations question. But if I were to grant uh, the premise of some of the arguments you've made tonight, why wouldn't, for example, an energy poor or you know oil poor society? Uh, have made contact with the UFOs and appropriated their electromagnetic carbon-free technologies. You know, how, like they, they would be in a position to want it, need it, and use it very quickly, wouldn't they? Well, and, and yeah, conversely, what about let's say something like the uh, the European Union, which is coming apart at the seams. The uh, half dozen or so uh, billionaire predators who you fear control the Earth are they in favor of the European Union? because it's a global tra or an international trade organization that gives them open markets, or are they trying to shred the European Union? Are they in favor of mass migration and the cheap labor that comes with it, or are they pushing the right-wing anti-immigrant sentiment? Uh, you know, Trump and China. Are the billionaire predators in favor of protectionism against China, like President Trump, who might be among their ranks? Or do they want to have the global trade and get all the cheap plastic shit from China so they can fill the ocean with it? Let's throw it out. Like, I, there's something about this that 
I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with how the, the, well, the pieces the, fit together. This is why people study and try to find answers to things that are not in, you know, where the answers aren't readily available in any news. You, you have to... You have to follow the trail. Some people do research for years to come to an answer of who's in control of this or that. You now I don't, I can't, I don't have an answer for you. Uh, I, I'm just working with the things I'm working with. You know, I can't cover every issue. If, if I don't know if something is a conspiracy or not, I won't, won't express an opinion on it. Okay. Thank you. So uh, let's. Uh, Let's have a show of hands to see who wants to do a rebuttal tonight. Keep your hands up. Also, uh, we made an announcement earlier. We have to start moving out of here by about 18 minutes to 9. We have to be out of this room by a quarter to 9 because it, we ran way over last week. And we can't do that week after week. So we'll, we'll monitor the time here. Uh, I won't have the last word but for about two minutes. And we'll, we'll get out of here and start moving back by you know, quarter to nine for sure. Okay? Hands up for rebuttals. Who's got a, who wants a rebuttal? One, one, two, three, four, five, John, Jonathan's five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. That's nine people. Go for it. I counted nine hands. Can you raise your hands one more time? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep, that's nine. Okay. Um, we got three minutes. Yeah, everybody's got three minutes. Or less. Or less if it takes less. What? Right. I'll, I'll run the clock. Yeah. All right. First of all, I got to say that. I'm pretty disappointed in Trump being manipulated by right wing nut job radio. It's really sad when a president is controlled by the media. And um, Andy was a little disappointed, even though America is the largest producer of oil. You could continually lump in oil and coal. You know, around the world they're doing things about coal. Uh, we have solar, we have wind, we have uh, nuclear, hydro, all kinds of stuff. And coal is not a big problem. It's oil because we're completely dependent on oil and foreign oil. We import 75% of our oil still. Even though, even though we're doing a lot of fracking, other means of extractions. So, um, well, you don't get any. You know, but yeah, all, but, I've mentioned this a couple times before. That um, you didn't say that. I just took it up. The media tricks us into thinking that these are religion wars in the Middle East in all these oil countries, and really it's about I'm just oil trying to get wars. All my checks in. And there's such poor reporting, misleading reporting by the fake news that these are all religion wars, and really they're oil wars. They're about pipelines and production and pumping and ports, whether it's Yemen, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Syria. Who knows what ISIS stands for? I do. They always say it's Islamic State, but you know what? The important part is the last two ISs, and that means Iraq and Syria. <laughs> Which means we're still fighting the Iraq War, 15, over 15 years later, which is an oil war. So, um, you know, another thing about Saudi Arabia, our good friends. I'm watching this, the dictator, the dictator handbook on PBS, and they had a nice Idi Amin uh, story. And our good friends, this guy killed a half a million people in. Uh, Uganda, <laughs> and our good friends in Saudi Arabia took him in, in exile, and he lived to the nice ripe age of the, in his 90s and got to marry people, and, uh, you know, that's America's friends, Saudi Arabia. Next, next rebutter, please. No more <laughs> I hope I can get this done in three minutes. Give me a minute sign, will you? I will. And wave your hand. I can't see very I well. Uh, the truth is elusive. 
I'll give you a, a sample from history that I looked at. Uh, the Korean War, of course we know the, 40, the 38th parallel was caused by the North Korean communists who attacked, it was a surprise attack, right? Not so fast. Uh, Howard Zinn in the People's History of the United States doesn't quite agree. Then you look at Ken Burns, the uh, Vietnam series. I didn't read the book, but I saw the series. Uh, the communists uh, uh, went after the free world, right? Well, not so fast. Maybe it was a civil war, and uh, Korea doesn't seem to be, I mean, Vietnam doesn't seem to be a very terrible country now compared to what we thought and we lost that war. I'm now reading, I think it's I.F. Stone, I believe, The Hidden History of the Korean War. And he says too, not so fast, it might not have been that way. I haven't read the whole book yet, but I think my view of that history is changing. So uh, uh, Andy's point is, uh, the truth is elusive. Thank you. Next. Um, I'm, a, I'm a full supporter of uh, freedom of speech and if people have opinions. I, I do believe there are conspiracies out there. We need to uh, have an open forum to talk about them. Um, the proof in the pudding is that there are actually laws in the books, federally and state, for uh, people who commit conspiracy, for which those stuff like that does happen. So uh, I've had talks with Andy, and I respect that he has an opinion, um, but I would dissent in a lot of the stuff he talks about. Um, not everything, though. Uh, for example, uh, when he talks about 9-11, uh, I really think that uh, Basically, that's a distraction. I, the, um, you have a tremendous amount of energy on this 9-11 conspiracy, and, and you don't hear a lot of talk about the invasion of Iraq, which was really devastating to our economy, as well to our foreign policy. We had a huge standing in the world as people who were promoting the ideals of freedom and democracy, and we lost a lot of uh, power and sway with other countries in trying to get them to uh, to act uh, unilaterally with us. Now, there are a lot of people who don't trust us. And uh, instead of talking about those miscues, those mistakes, and possible crimes, don't know if there are crimes, but possible instead, and we spend a lot of effort on 9-11, that's a shame. Uh, regarding um, the AIDS thing, that I, and I've talked to Andy about this too, uh, he's uh, specifically, he's talked about AZT, which was a drug initially marketed by the pharmaceuticals as a quick stopgap measure to treat AIDS when it was first diagnosed. Uh, it turned out to be um, uh, basically really bad for people. It made things worse. And, um, but I told Andy, you know, th this is an example of pharmaceuticals trying to make a lot of money. It does not prove that the virus doesn't exist. So, and, and a, an example of this is uh, now you have the opioid ep epidemic that is pushed by pharmaceuticals pushing for larger market share. Now we have a huge opioid epidemic. So we have a history of companies acting in their own financial self-interest. And um, I guess finally I'd like to say about 9-11 is um, you don't, uh, to, to do that kind of thing, Noam Chomsky said this best, I think. He said, you can't have a conspiracy of that huge proportion. It would require so many thousands of people to participate and not have whistleblowers. You just can't do it. An example is the Bay of Pigs. Total screw up by the CIA. Involved thousands of people recruiting thousands of Cuban exiles, had all these training camps, and you couldn't keep it a secret. And what was the end result? Months before the invasion of Cuba, you read about it in the New York Times. That's how Castro found out about it before it even happened. So you just, you just can't, it, it's just unfeasible, I think, that this can, it could have even happened. Thanks. Next. Hello. 
I ask a lot in those questions about the foreign countries because one of the things I like least about this sort of school of conspiracy theory is it always seems to stop at the nation's border. And if the American empire is as strong as it is, I want to know, how does this impact Canada? How does this impact the European Union? How does this impact you know, all the other countries that we have massive trading relationships with? Uh, but I touched on some of that already. Uh, interesting thing about the Green New Deal, whether you're in favor of it or not, that is a great example of something that bubbled up from a third party, in this case the Green Party in the state of New York, when Howie Hawkins was running for governor there eight years ago. Uh, and then it came up to Jill Stein's presidential campaigns in 2012 and 2016 from there. And now it's in the news every freaking day, even on Fox News. Fox is heckling it, but it's on the news pretty much every day. This is the opposite of a, a news blackout. It's just the, the pace at which information um, percolates slowly. Similarly about the Yellow Vest movement, that speaks more to American self-absorption. And to be fair, we're having enough of a crisis in the United States right now that we're not always great at following foreign headlines. Uh, this could be an interesting future College of Complexes talk. For all of the uh, love I've heard given to Scandinavian social democracy, Tim, there is not one exclusive evening on Scandinavian social democracy going back in your archives to 2010. Uh, there may be prior, but not on you know video in the last eight or nine years. So that could be something interesting to learn. Uh, and I'm in biased in favor of the Green New Deal or against it, but uh, the, I'm biased in favor of the third parties being the source of interesting new ideas that get cherry-picked, <laughs> because I represent one myself with the Libertarians. Um, and on that note, I will say we're also having a local election. There are not a lot of great options out there necessarily, but one that I find pretty appealing, warts and all, is Dr. Willie Wilson, because who can you think of who can bring together an opposition to TIFFs, tax increment financing, you've had an evening on that, at least one with Ben Jarofsky, uh, who is in favor of the you know, development of business in Chicago, but also wants to extend more government funding to the lower income African American and Latino or Latinx neighborhoods. Now, not a lot of people would combine all those different threads unless they're sort of, eh, mushy political insiders of one sort or another who are, well, they're a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and nothing at all. But Wilson pr presents an interesting sort of outsider's perspective where he's reshuffling the deck a little bit. Um, whether you like him or lump him, he is worth more than Susanna Mendoza, worth more than Tony Preckwinkle, worth more than uh, Bill Daly. We've had 88 years of one party rule and 43 of them by one family. Anyway, that's my time. Thank you very much. I want to thank Andy for giving a good talk, bringing out a lot of ideas and a lot of uh, questions. I like to hear different people's thinking and different people's ideas and different people's thoughts. No one has really gotten to the core problem. And the one thing this society suffers from, and I see it gripping off a lot of you, and the one thing that is behind every cancer, every disease, every emotional problem, every relationship problem that you have, without exception, is unforgiveness. And your forgiveness has got to be unconditional. Most of you know the Lord's Prayer. Jesus says, if you forgive those who sin against you, the Father will forgive you your sins. But if you do not forgive those who sin against you, neither will the Father forgive you your sins. So you have no choice but to forgive. If you don't forgive, you're going to just see these problems go on and on and become deeper and deeper and deeper. The answer Jesus gave us one new commandment. It's not a suggestion, it's a commandment. You are to love each other as much as I love you. That goes way beyond brotherly love, God's unconditional agape love. You've got to love unconditionally. 
if you love unconditionally and forgive unconditionally, you're going to see answers to society's problems. If you don't forgive, you're going to see everything go downhill. The choice is yours. Something not being reported on the nightly news is not evidence of censorship. Uh, maybe the Justice Democrats weren't newsworthy until AOC's election victory. Uh, Bernie Sanders once quipped that open borders is a right-wing Koch brothers proposal. If closed borders is then a left-wing proposal, then Donald Trump is Che Guevara. Hold on, let me give it to the people. The Koch brothers are also pro-choice. In fact, the Koch bro brothers are not even conservative, but more accurately libertarian. Conservatives seek to preserve the status quo. The status quo is socialism. Cons uh, this puts libertarians on the left wing. One of the Koch brothers uh, was one of the founders of the Cato Institute, a possible source of fake news I heard tonight. Uh, but they also have published works by Noam Chomsky and Glenn Greenwald. Now, 7-Eleven is a part-time job. Hear me out, guys, hear me out. It's not as crazy as you're thinking. 7-Eleven stores are franchises, meaning they're like small businesses, okay? Okay. Hear me out. So, labor costs are very important to small businesses. And if you raise the minimum wage, you increase the labor costs on small businesses like a 7-Eleven franchise. Okay, hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. If small business owners get an increase in labor costs, they're either going to have to raise prices or cut their profits. Some businesses have very little profits, if at all, so they're likely to raise prices. Most, uh, less than 5% of workers work for at the minimum wage. Most businesses are small businesses. 7-Eleven will continue to be a part-time job if you keep raising the price of labor unnecessarily. You can Google this for yourself, guys. It's not, you know, it's very easy to find, but uh, you can easily see for yourself how raising the minimum wage leads to unemployment. Thank you. Oh my God. All right, Give me a break. Jonathan. Thank you, Andy, for an interesting talk. Did uh, anybody see the Grammys last Saturday, Saturday, Sunday? Anybody see the Grammys? No. It was pretty good Grammys. I'd love to know. My heart's in love, Chicago. You know we live with Ross. My mom's yeah. a medical model, but they ain't gonna kick her out of her home. We are we, we are we, the people. We are we, we are unstoppable. Our times now we all know, realize our strength, we're powerful. Ain't gonna forfeit to Imperials. Ain't gonna give in to the ego ghosts. We are we, we are we, the people. We are we, we are unstoppable. Angel, let's take to the road. Angel, angel, let's just go. Angel, we'll make our own. Angel, angel, strong our both. Us when one asks the other for a helping hand. Us when one asks another for a movement mind. We know, we know we can. Say it with a tuba, computer, wheelchair, organizing. Say it like Martin Luther, Aretha, or Joan Baez. Say it with a tuba, computer, song, smile, or mic, yeah. Like Fannie Lou, like Saul, or Jane, or Chairman Fred, we see you rising. Our hearts in love, Chicago, you know we live with raw soul. Mom's town's institutional model, but 
they ain't gonna kick her out of her home. We are we, we are we, the people. We are we, we are unstoppable. This weekend, there's an all-star uh, game going on for the National Basketball Association in Charlotte, North Carolina. And uh, that's pretty much the only reason I think uh, the number one motivational factor for me to graduate high school existed was my mom said, if you get a passing grade, I'll get you the sports network on cable and you can watch uh, Craig Hodges and Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen and Phil Jackson win all those championships. Well, I guarantee you I was a pretty poor student, but I passed. And I graduated high school with just the skin of the skinny skin, skin of my nose, and a high school degree. Uh, if you want to get a great book this week for All-Star Weekend, I suggest Long Shot by Craig Hodges, The Triumph and Struggles of an NBA Freedom Fighter. Uh, he's a Chicago champion on and off the court. Happy All-Star Weekend and happy birthday, Ryan, Alexa, Linda, and our own Chicago's legendary Larry Biondi, who's here with us today. Jonathan, I could not disagree with you more on the most important sports book in the in the thing. The Cubs way is better. Talk, talks about Theo Epstein and how he re how he got the Cubs winning the World Series after a hundred and eight drought. That's the book you should be reading. That's the book you should be reading. Now, Andy. I'm not going to comment tonight on some of the uh, stuff that you've been doing because I. Well, maybe, maybe. All right. Okay. Whose birthday is it, Heather? My little Mary. Mary. My little Mary. Your time's up, too. No relation. All right. Okay. I'm just going to say this, Andy could be no more wrong than with his stance on nuclear power and how he says renewables are going to save the planet. I will explain in a lot more detail at some other time when I have a lot more stuff on it. The thing you should be reading is the roadmap to nowhere. And how with the amount of resources that it would take to power this world by wind and solar is absolutely preposterous. Advanced industrial societies need energy to run. And the only way we're really going to do it is to get a more compact, more energy source it's a lot smaller than what we have and the only way you're going to find that's with uranium and plutonium and some form of nuclear power with distributed centralized utilities now as far as the other stuff with 9-11 i think it's uh i still think it's 12 guys who got on a plane and crashed them into buildings about the aids epidemic i think hiv is a real disease about ufos I think that UFO conspiracy was invented by the government to cover up some of the black ops operations they were covering in Area 51. The drones. The drones and things like that. And there was a lot of UFO reports when they first brought out a lot of the uh, test aircraft for uh, our military and then a lot of that can be explained away once those advanced aircraft are made public. For example, some of the stealth technology that was done during the 70s and 80s is now routinely commonplace. There was a lot of UFO reports about silent aircraft and big things going crazy around the, around the world. Now, if you, if you want to learn about UFOs, just go to the, U, uh, the U, UFO National Reporting Agency. If you want to learn about the 9-11 conspiracies, there's a lot out there that you can do that with, but I think that some fact-checking and some things along those lines are probably the best way to do it. As I said before, you check the facts, you'll find that socialism doesn't work, and you'll find that capitalism does. I'll just leave it at that. Charlie, if you're ready. All right. Good point about area. All right, let's thank Andy again for I've got to be still talking too.
Let go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're next. All right, I'll be collecting this thing in. All right, let's see. Um, regarding common dreams and this list here, um, how do you tell fake news from real news? Um, what is the editorial policy of the medium? Um, I looked at uh, common dreams. Uh, they don't really have much of a staff. They're not a news production outfit. Uh, they have a list of authors they subscribe to, but when it comes down to it, tomorrow I could submit an article. They have several emails for doing so. Uh, I don't know what would happen then. If it's glanced at or looked at, they've only got a staff of maybe three, four people. Uh, it's published, or it could be published. But they do have a list of established authors. Uh, that's, these are lefty search engines and they are not in the medium in the traditional mode as I was the librarian we have publications there's not anything wrong with them I, I like one of them truth out myself when it just began um, I have nothing averse to it but I do know that these are not publisher publications other caliber with the same precise exacting standards as publications such as the Washington Post, New York Times, Newsweek Time, uh, The Hill, other publications like that. The librarians get together and they put out a thing called the Reader's Guide to Periodical Literature, in which we actually vote upon what about those 150 publications that we trust the information contained in. That's how we do it, and we know how they're put out and by whom, and they've been around for many years. But uh, these are uh, reader-generated sites. They're open access, I call it. Anybody, and actually we have some people from the college who publish on some of these, and they're good articles. Uh, I'm not putting it in, I don't want to object to it. But uh, now the other thing is, simply because something is not published or printed, it's censored. And I don't, you give the example, of this energy thing. I published a book when the internet came out on green building technology with hundreds of sites and information and you give this example that somehow it was censored. I have no idea, Andy, this was right when the internet came about at the very beginning. It was on green building technology energy savings. And there was no, obviously, no censorship in effect. So I'm sorry, I don't know what you're talking about. Now the other thing, you bring up topics that inherently are controversial. Uh, one regarding medical situations of a life or death situation. Now, I'm an editor of a publication. And you come to me with the publication that could, in fact, result in someone's death or life, depending, and I'm going to hesitate to whether or not I'm going to authorize publication of that. That's only using very basic, that's what we expect an editor to do. No one who's a writer or publisher, I've been in the business, has not had an article rejected. That's what they exist to do. They ended back for a rewrite, or sometimes they tell you, that's it, let's go on to another. They give you the assignment, the assignment desk, the assignment editor. So you don't have any, you don't own the newspaper. And then, yeah, you, I don't know, you're reading into these stories. Well, they all got stories that, yeah, they wanted to pursue something, but there was a difference of opinion. That's what editors, in fact, do. I wanted to get in the 9-11 year. Where's that, where's the libertarian guy who was trying to say, I like that word. He was trying to say, the, he was giving arguments that we have to have slavery because that otherwise the plantation would not be profitable. Yeah. What kind of art statement is that? Anyhow, thanks a lot, Andy. Go back to the way.
pull up next time. What did I straw yeah. man? I, I, I flat out lie, wow. actually. I never said anything about slavery. Well, I know, but Why do commies lie all the time? You're trying to justify... I'm not justifying no anything. I gave us this 3%, less than 3% work. Yeah, hey, we gotta speak. Wouldn't we all be working for minimum wage? Hey, guy out. The plantation won't be profitable, right? Don't get started. Let's roll it back. All the way. Come on, you guys. Okay. Take it to the back. Hi. Oh, um, you have me on a chance here. Yeah, three minutes. Okay, give me a warning. I'm Ellen Corley. Uh, thank you. Uh, great effort. I love free speech. I appreciate Andy's talk. I um, and I, in a way, I want to, I guess, kind of apologize in a way to Charlie because I believe that I believe you know I'm concerned about censorship and um, I. It, the truth is, it really is the biggest issue there is, and um, I think it's brought on, you know, in order to solve it. I'm always like, why can't we solve it? How can we have policies? What can we change? So we need to, you know, go back to the fairness doctrine where the burden is on the magazine or the media to to write only in the public interest, to come to truth. But the Republicans threw that out uh, under Reagan. Uh, they said, we have cable, no problem. There's so much competition. Uh, let's not regulate um, the, the head of media. Then they put in the Telecommunications Act. So now we really only have six media sources. It's called the Media Monopoly. And they're basically controlled by GE. So that's why we have a corporate media. How can we fix that problem? Well, one, we got to admit it. And it's it's so frustrating because there really is something called Project Mockingbird that after World War II that every single media, the CIA, put a an editor in there. Um, I, you know, editor, a writer, sapphire, you know, and how do we know this? Whistleblowers. Whistleblowers are working all the time. That's how Andy's sources come through. I'm a whistleblower. All these lefties are whistleblowers. That's why they get killed. The ones, Robert Perry, um, you know, uh, the one I watched last night, I've just discovered, is named Mike Ruppert. He was a LA cop and he, in drug enforcement, both his parents were in the OSS CIA. He was, he exposed that all the drugs that come into America come, came in by our CIA. That's why we went into Vietnam. Well, that's why our CIA killed John F. Kennedy. That because they wanted to keep the opium coming in. And if somebody is determined to tell the truth about it, and people are going to hear them, like Gary um, Webb was, you, you see the movie To Kill the Messenger, he was killed because it got to be a big article. Washington Post, New York Times, Wall Street Journal had to put their heads together. CIA, FBI, NSA, every Mossad, put, do them all together. They're the ones that are did 9/11, killed Kennedy. They're, they tried to do the you know Bay of Pigs. You know Kennedy was fighting it. He had to be taken out. Every single one of these people were taken out by the state-sponsored terrorism. It makes you mad and you want to stop them. If, if somebody in our midst is a covert operation, you want to say something and talk about it. And But maybe you need to do it in private because it is awkward. These guys are killers. As I was watching William Bloom, who talked, he said, he goes, I love Chavez, but why did he know to shut up? Those guys were going to take him out. That's what they do when you really whistle blow and if, it, if you get a big enough platform, they're going to take you out. It takes courage to do what I do, what Andy does, and I want to encourage everybody else to do it. And if and then we got to regulate it. We put back in that the school curriculum has to be based in truth, that the media has to be based in truth, the EPA has to be based in truth. Science has to be always there. And I have to say I agree with forgiveness scientific fact is that is scientifically proven and here's my my greatest thing today I'm with an interfaith group talking about how to deal with criminal justice reform and racism but I have done the research gone back to my family 16th great grandparents my they helped King Henry VIII this this guy 
he, very wise. I'm really lucky. It's a sign from God. He would have starved, but for a kindly cat brought him pigeons. That, to me, is a sign. This man knew that story, too. This story has gone for 18 centuries, and I've got him on both sides. God's telling me, keep telling the truth, Ellen. It's going to work. But make sure uh, you forgive. You, if you really get to the truth, you can forgive the ones that know not what they do, right? <laughs> we all are kind of self-deceiving. Self all right. I just need one minute. I have asked Andy for a brief minute because I will say one thing about Andy. You know, he is, uh, we do agree about one thing, and that is about cars. He drives a Scion XB, and I drive a Scion XB. I just bought another Scion XB. And you know, all, Andy does make a lot of contributions here to the college every week. I consider him a personal friend. Even though we agree to disagree on a lot of topics, that does not distinguish nor dispute the character of anybody here. I also dis disagree a lot with Charlie, but he is and runs this operation. And most of the time we work together as a team. Yes, there's been disputes, but I think we've worked things out over time. So, you know, you may not like Andy's views, but uh, in the strong tradition of the college, you leave and you be friends, and that's how it should work. So I just want to give Andy a round of applause again tonight for, you know, getting his views out. Yes, there's a lot of disagreement, but we do have a lot of things that we agree about. And one of those values is stability. One last regard. All right. Three minutes. Good evening, Caesar with the International Logic Party. Um, so I've heard it said that the media is the fourth branch of government by some unofficial because uh, they kind of keep the government in check. Um, and that kind of makes sense. In, I mean, you, you could extrapolate it that way. Uh, but that's in the old forms of democracy, starting such as, well, in the representative democracy that we have currently. <laughs> Uh, that might be necessary. However, in an intelligent democracy, I don't find that to be as necessary because the, an intelligent democracy is not as manipulable as the current democracy. The example of an intelligent democracy is the International Logic Party. The International Logic Party does not work like any other party before. And that's because the people express their ideas and their issues, and that becomes aggregated into one common index, showing what are the most strongly supported ideas within the population. From that index, we find candidates who actually represent what the people want. And sure, you know, there's always the question of whether the candidates are going to do what the people really want. I mean, that's always going to be the problem anytime they have that. But you do want professionals in those positions, actually, dedicated to these roles. Um, but the point is, is that, it, as, if nothing else, the system works almost like a petition mechanism that very accurately shows what the people really want. But the basis of all of that is really the ideological profile. Everyone within the International Logic Party has an ideological profile for themselves. And I want to show you what mine looks like here. This is, what is it, six pages? These are my main ideas that I support. And the ideological profile is, is really Hi. integral to, uh, to creating an intelligent democracy because it really makes the system very transparent. For example, if I have some really stupid ideas, I am much more likely to be able to perceive that when I'm forced to write it out and actually expound it in, in a way that everyone can see. I'm much more self-critical of myself. I, I want to make sure that I don't put something here that's embarrassing. And by the way, I know you can't read this right now, but you're able to find my ideological profile on our website right there. It's at the bottom here, igora-ilp.org. So the system is much more self-critical because I am much more self-critical, but then you're much more effectively able to look at my ideas, see what I stand for, 
and to criticize me to learn from me, maybe I have something valuable. Um, or maybe, maybe I don't, but you can point that out to me. And so with a system like this, people can really communicate and we can find what are the ideas that we all have in common much more effectively, much more quickly to really see what the people want and whether the government is actually enacting the will of the people. That's one of the aspects. There's a lot more to explain about that. I invite you to come to our meetings. I have flyers. I'd be happy to distribute to you. Thank you. Make your ideological program. Okay. Finish up and then gamble us out, Andy. Um, yeah, as I said before, right after I get through here, a couple, three, four minutes, uh, start moving to the back because they want to start getting in here by about a quarter to nine. Thank you all. Um, in uh, long about 1998-1997, if you went into a big Catholic church in Chicago or New York and said, oh, by the way, Father O'Malley has been abusing your kids for the last 12 years, about half of the congregation would start screaming and yelling and verbally abuse you. Get the hell out of here. You're slandering the man. That can't be true. When people can't face the reality of something, they attack the messenger. Well, uh, does anybody know where that, that saying comes from, ancient, you know, shoot the messenger? Is, is that Bible. back from Greek and Roman time? The Bible. Kill, it's in the Bible? Kill the messenger, right? If it's, if it's news you don't want to hear, that's why people are... Uh, always afraid to have to be give bad news to the boss or something, you know, or somebody above them in authority. And we saw that here tonight um, on several different issues. Some people handle the information better than others. On the main facts that I listed, none of those were my opinion or Andy's viewpoint. The, the college keeps confusing the fact that when I give you a list of what 10,000 scientists, a summary of that, that's not my viewpoint or opinion. It's documented reality that is documented all over the world. And that's the problem we have in America, that some people can't face documented reality because it's too bad to think about, or they haven't. Professor Griffin, and early on, he said, you don't need an open mind to understand this. You need a 30% open mind and a seventh grade education. The hard part is stepping through the psychological barrier and looking at the evidence. On the subject of 9-11, there's a psychological barrier. People won't step through it and look at the evidence that any 6th or 7th grader can understand. On the subject of AIDS, ten, you know, thousands of scientists have published that database that I summarized for you tonight. It's not my opinion that they've been curing people all over the world who have been misdiagnosed as having AIDS when they didn't. That's the big scandal that the media is not reporting because billions, hundreds of billions of dollars of lawsuits are at stake when these things come out. There's going to be lawsuits flying all over the place if the grand jury in New York actually publishes the forensic evidence that shows that Bush and Cheney and the people of his administration were responsible for orchestrating 9-11. But it takes a while in America for the lawsuits to wind their way up through the courts. Today, I don't think you can get into a decent argument or difference of opinion with anybody when you argue that the Catholic Church has some pedophile priests in it. We're pretty much all on the same page. I don't think, maybe Charlie will know. Charlie, have we ever had anybody in the college that has talked about the benefits of child abuse? Most of us think child abuse is wrong, and we, we support groups that are trying to protect children. But there's a handful of people out there, sick people, that believe abusing children is uh, good for their education. Start them having sex at seven or eight. I mean, it's creepy. Uh, you know, I, I don't know anybody personally that, that supports those people, but they're out there. And so, you know, yeah, reality moves forward in the direction of truth. Today we have smoke-free buildings. Today, you know, because of Ralph Nader, we have seat belts in cars. Common sense things that save lives. And doctors all over the world are saving lives by telling people, you were misdiagnosed, you were never HIV positive. And that, that's not my opinion. That's documented in hundreds of places all over the planet. So when anybody heckles me for presenting the views of scientists, it's not my opinion. 
but if you if you care about the future of children or you care about the future of veterans and they want to you know live a, uh, the last few years of their lives uh, in, in the VA or wherever they, they they shouldn't be subjected to this kind of malpractice and, uh, well this is what the doctors are saying it's malpractice to misdiagnose them let them finish you have no qualifications on this stuff. Let me answer Charlie's let me answer Charlie's objection. I agree with Charlie one hundred percent. I have no medical qualifications yes. whatsoever. But the guy with the Nobel Prize that wrote the book, well, you he has one been. book from twenty years ago. Not one book, Charlie, there's dozens. You know, and they there's dozens. You this. You know. You're in you're in the same place you know. as the people that wouldn't have been the priests are better. Yet. Well, that, that's, that's your problem, Charlie, not mine. It's quackery. That's, that's your problem, Charlie, not mine. I'm sorry that you have that problem. I, I apologize if it offends you, but other people aren't offended by learning what's happening around the world. So, the last, the last thing I'm going to say... tell them this is bullshit. It's a doctor thing. You're not a doctor. I never said I was. I'm a translator, Charlie. I just translate the books. about their health. Right. All right, let, let Andy finish. Who's got stuff plugged in back here? The, the woman. Who's got stuff plugged in Thank you, sorry. I would, I would highly recommend for anybody that thinks Andy's not a doctor, uh, log on to the website of Dr. Peter Duesberg. He, he's got a PhD uh, in biochemistry. You don't get medicine off the internet. What? You don't get medicine off the internet. You can find out no, all the sources. No, you go to the doctor. Are. You're making an appointment. I okay. It would be nice if you'd stop heckling, Charlie. No, you not good. See, you can't. I just said there's two things you can't talk about here: 9/11 and AIDS. Yeah, he's part of the U.S. Charlie Johnson. The last week, as we're picking up. The last thing I would mention uh, about the Green Revolution, if you only can remember one fact from tonight, remember that 10,000 oh, times more light bulbs are created. Hold on for just a minute. Let me just talk this. It's got three minutes. It's got three minutes. 10,000 times more light bulbs on a cell than what the human race uses in energy. 10,000 times. 10,000 10, times more energy arrives as clean solar energy from a fusion reactor out there that has no pollution problems. We collect more than 10,000 of them. We don't need anything else. Okay? So that's it. We're going to wrap up for tonight. The natives are getting restless over here, uh, wanting to uh, kick us out. So uh, thank you all for coming, and uh, good luck, and we'll see you next week. Anybody wants any more of those flowers, uh, come see me in a couple minutes back there. Thank you all. We're adjourned for the night. Did you gavel it up? We'll gavel it up. There we are.